Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service at the Hampton United Methodist Church. Those of you here, as well as our friends joining us on KLMJ Radio and Facebook. I'm Alion Trevino, serving as worship leader today, and Shiona Stewart will be leading our singing. Uh, Just a reminder that October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so let's take this and other opportunities to express our appreciation to Pastor Dennis for his willingness to answer the call to serve. God is good, all the time. All the time, God is good. Please please stand if you're able, and join me for hymn number 61, Come Thou Almighty King. You may be seated. And now join me in the call to worship. We gather to listen to the voice of Jesus say, come, come, follow me. But will you follow when Jesus also calls you to release the hold wealth has on you? We We want want to to follow follow Jesus Jesus anywhere anywhere he leads. And and we we can can with God's God's help. help. We gather to remember all that God has taught us through scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. But what about when we have to put what we know into action? We want want to to put our our faith faith into into action, action, and we we can can with with God's God's help. We gather to live into God's economy of abundance, recognizing the riches of the prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness that surround us. But what about when the world tempts us back into scarcity? We want want to to turn turn away away from from scarcity scarcity and and choose choose God's abundance and we can with God's help. We gather to shine as a beacon of a new way of living, where following Jesus means sharing in God's abundant gifts together. But will you keep shining when others try to pull you astray, putting the pursuit of wealth before the pursuit of God? With With God's God's help, we will will resist resist the pull of wealth wealth and the the fear fear of scarcity and and pursue the way of love abundance, abundance and, and flourishing, flourishing for, for all creation. creation. 
Amen. 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 Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from Job chapter 23. Job is in conversation with one of his, well, his friends. And Job answered his friend, saying, Today also my complaint is built here. His hand is heavy upon me despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. Our Psalms lesson is from Psalms 22. It is verses 1 through 5. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I still find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. And now please join me for hymn number 400, Come Thou Fount, Fount, Fount of Every Blessing.
Also from the book of Psalm. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. O prosper the work of our hands. Now please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 10 verses 17 through 21. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not, you shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Well, I wasn't going to say this, but thank you for the thank you. Um, when I entered into ministry, I had to go see a psychiatrist. It's required. Uh, it was interesting as I traveled to Des Moines and met with a psychiatrist that his first question to me was, looking over your paperwork here, it shows that you were a master plumber. Master plumbers, they make a lot of money you're giving that up. What are you, crazy? <laughs> and then we have our gospel lesson this morning. No, um, two weeks later when I went back and he read all the forms and the charts and the, and the tests that I took, he had another question for me. He says, why did it take you so long to answer the call? And I looked at him and says, what makes you think that I didn't answer the call to be a plumber? What makes you think that I didn't serve God for the last 50 years? This is just different. Different time in a different place. But God is working in all of us no matter what calling he has for us. In Job, we had this word from Job. It says, my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come before him. This is Job saying, Hey, God, I'm here. Where are you? Where are you? 
How many of you, uh, God's children, well, little children, um, remember the last time you played hide and seek? Hide and seek, I see some smiles. I, I see some head scratching. I, I, I don't know. Did you forget? Don't remember that? Um, Job, we, we kind of jumped into the middle of the Old Testament. If we back up, uh, does anybody know what the first question in the Old Testament is? The first question in Scripture. God was looking for Adam. Adam, where are you? Hmm. I wonder how we could interpret that in such a way as to realize that God is still looking for all of us to say, here I am. Send me. Send me. But Job was wondering in his heart whether God was really up there, whether God was really paying attention. Um, and the scriptures get worse if you turn to Psalms 22. Uh, we hear this other scripture of a voice crying out. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Why can't you hear my groaning and my prayers? Hey God, I've read my Bible. I've heard the stories of the saints. And by golly, they cried and you heard. They cried and they were saved. They cried and you healed them. You saved them. Lord, praise you for all that you've done for them. But what about me? What about me? The psalmist keeps writing in Psalms 90, teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. I was listening to Country Music Station the other day, that song that you've heard, you know, I want to go to heaven, but not right now. Teach us to count our days that we might gain a wise heart. We must continually search for the Lord um, oh, I, I heard a preacher say, I sought the Lord, I sought the Lord, and then he found me. <laughs> Hide and seek. Who's looking, who's searching, and who's to be found, or who is the finder? No matter where we are, God sees us. And he knows our hearts and minds, and he listens to us when we groan and when we pray. The psalmist prayed, let your work be manifest to your servants. Let your glorious power be dispersed even to their children let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. Oh, prosper for us the work of our hands. Prosper for us the work of our hands. Um, there's a good old hymn, make me a blessing, make me a blessing, make me a... But that second line... For someone, make me a blessing for someone today. And so if we are to understand what our calling to ministry is, our calling to profession, whether you be clergy or laity, Next Sunday is laity. I'll, I'll take the day off. I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. But it's a day for me to refresh. It's a day for someone else 
to preach to you the Word of God as they hear it and as they live it and as they apply it so that you can see it's not just, oh, we got a preacher up there. We watch him really, really close. But it's a chance to say, hey, God is watching all of us and all of us who are being watched, who are being tested, have a testimony, have a witness in how we live. In our gospel lesson, Mark chapter 10, um, there was a man. Jesus was on his way to somewhere else. And on his way to somewhere else, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do so that I might have eternal life? Now, if we were to dramatize this, I I would really instinctively feel that you need to understand that this was a man or a woman. I'll be inclusive a little bit because that part of it, that part of the story doesn't make any difference to what we need to glean from it. Men are rich. There are women that are rich. Those who are rich tend to be proud. They tend to be self-sufficient. They tend to be self-serving. Every, oh, I heard a guy say, I can account for every nickel I ever had. As if that's a good thing. You see, someday when we stand before the throne, there will be an accounting of what you've done for the kingdom and accounting for what we have done. There was this man, one man, says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus stops him and says, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. So in this man's thinking process, he's probably thinking in his pride, in his success, in his riches, that he's good. He is healthy. He has got it all. But he's one man. And... I'm interpreting that he was by himself, that he was alone, that there was no brother and sister, there were no kids, there were no children, there were no friends. This one man, to me, seemed like an island unto himself. And Jesus spoke to this man who seemed to be living in total isolation, and Jesus asked him about the commandments, those commandments that deal with our relationship with others. And this man who was alone clicked him off very quickly. You know the commandments, you shall not murder. <laughs> I didn't, I, I, I haven't, I don't do that. You should not commit adultery. Yep, yep, I got that one too. <laughs> I got no friends, no family, no, I, I don't, don't commit adultery. You should not steal. This is, yeah, I'm, I live on my mansion out there on the hill and nobody comes to bother me. I, 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 I've got everything I need. I got no reason to steal. So, hey, I got three going good for me so far with my answers. You shall not bear false witnesses. And he says, oh, yeah, because I don't, I don't mix in with society. I, I, I don't vote, so I'm not on a jury list. I, 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 don't, I don't get called as a witness. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm, I wouldn't lie. I'm I e- not even tempted to do that. You shall not defraud. He says, no, 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 no. I've, I got what I need. I don't have to lie or steal or take from someone else. Honor your father and mother. It says, yeah. You know, I inherited from my father and mother. They're, they're, well, I'm on the top of the hill, but just, just down by that grove of trees, I, I, got, them, I got them planted down there. Uh, I go visit once in a while. 
He said, teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go and sell what you have and give the money to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. Come follow me. Now, he took pride in these commandments that he kept, but, you know, he kept them, and yet he really didn't. He avoided them. If you're not in relationship with anybody else, if you've avoided everybody else, then there is no temptation for you to fail at or succeed at. So rather than Jesus bringing you a time of testing, rather than Jesus trying to show you how much you've grown in the strength and the faith of God and in love of neighbor, You've just evaded the question. And then you ask, when do I inherit the kingdom? When do I get my reward? Well, the Ten Commandments, that was kind of like only five out of the ten questions. We forget, uh, he has forgotten the other five. Uh, It's kind of like he knelt in front of Jesus, but he didn't realize who he was kneeling in front of. He wanted the reward, but he didn't count the cost. He saw Jesus, but it was as if he was not able to see the forest because the trees were in the way. He didn't see Jesus. He didn't see God. The Ten Commandments begin with, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Does he know what he's living his life for? Does he realize what the ultimate test of life truly is? To give glory to the God of all creation, to acknowledge that, oh, you who created me knows me better than I know myself. Seek me out. Look within. Understand. You love me. Lord, I love you. Understand that we are all one family throughout the world. Understand that I cannot serve you without serving, brother and sister. There was another of the Ten Commandments that I avoided. Not that I'm avoiding it. It's just that most people misunderstand. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Some people who are smarter than I know their Old Testament and they realize that, oh yeah, the the Sabbath day was that gift that God gave in the covenant to the Jewish people that they would be recognized and they would always honor, they would always remember. And yet in the New Testament, there's a verse that says, oh, woe unto them for they have not kept my Sabbath. In the Hebrew language, Sabbath means rest. It basically means that even though they've kept the Sabbath day, they haven't realized that they haven't kept within the presence of God. And so there is a Sabbath rest. There is a Sabbath Sabbath that God calls us into. To know that it's not just about a certain day, it's about every day. The New Testament Scriptures tells us that let no one judge you upon your keeping or not keeping the Sabbath. Let them not judge you, for one person keeps them in honor of God, and another person treats every day as if every day is holy. As if every day is holy. 
I thank the choir for singing their number this morning, um, Psalms of Jubilation. Within that psalm, there are two lines I'd like to quote. I, I took a picture of your choir music, and you know I sometimes do that. Not that I won't shred it this afternoon, because it's probably copyright violation. Um, what did I just say? <laughs> Tell of his salvation from day to day. And another page. We shall be glad all the days of our lives. And so the question is, is God hiding from us? Or are we hiding from God? When can we get together but at His holy throne? When we pray, Lord, come, fill our hearts with joy and jubilation that we might know your presence, that we might be filled with joy and happiness, that we might be blessed with assurance and knowledge, and the hope of our salvation might become real to us. Bless us, Lord. Our epistle lesson is from Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 is a letter to the church that basically tells the church, this is what you have. Appreciate what Jesus has done for you and acknowledge, bear witness, give testimony. Indeed, the word of the Lord God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow, and is able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one before whom we must render an account. That Old Testament question, Adam, where are you, still rings throughout all history. That question was asked after Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit and realized they were naked. I don't know, this sermon might be rated PG, but I want you to understand that before God, we are all naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one who we must render an account. The writer of this gospel epistle is affirming their faith. Since then, we are not judged by who we are, but by whose we are. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, our confession of sins and our confession of grace and salvation poured out among us. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are and yet found to be without sin. Found to be without sin. Are we still playing hide and seek? We need to find Jesus who is without sin so that Jesus can be for us the forgiveness of all sins. And so we are called, therefore, approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we might receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I started this sermon with a question of the Old Testament. What was the first question in the Old Testament? Adam, where are you? Anybody know what the first question in the New Testament is? The first question in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, not chapter one, that's the genealogies. Does anybody read the genealogies? There's a couple good sermons in there. Matthew chapter two. And it came to pass that in the city, Bethlehem in Judea, 
a Savior was born. Matthew chapter 2. The wise men came from afar, came looking. Where is he who was born king? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, and we come not just as one, not a individual man, not a lone woman, not a isolated child, but we come as all your children, united in faith and profession. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please um, stand if you're able as our gifts and offerings are brought to the altar and we have a slight change today. It will be Faith We Sing, hymn number 2016, Glorify Thy Name. Let us pray together our offertory prayer. Gracious God, you are our provider and sustainer. We bring our gifts today, mindful of your abundant love and mercy. As we offer these tithes and offerings, we ask that you remind us of the call to let go of our earthly attachments and follow you wholeheartedly. Bless these gifts and use them to further your kingdom on earth so that all may experience your grace and love. May our giving reflect our trust in you and our commitment to serve others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you with courage to turn from the riches the world values and to trust 
to choose God's economy over the world's economy and accept the opportunities to discover God's abundance over and over and over again so that if he fills you with blessings, you indeed are blessed to be a blessing to others. And all God's children said, Amen. Please join me for our final hymn, hymn number 467, Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows for the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says he will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. obey.